Hello again, folks. A little disclaimer before we begin. Got all that? Great. First on our list today, We Are All Dead Here is a very slick designer home paying homage to a certain someone in a grand way. I love the way rooms are broken up by multiple levels and lofts while still having an open feel. And I especially love the attention to detail given to the windows and the ceilings here. The use of bushes to line the skylight up top is especially nice when paired with the lighting from the Phasmascape skylights. The use of lanterns and lighting is especially on point, highlighting key points of interest throughout the house. The kitchen looks and feels like a million bucks with a sleek hanging table, an aquarium view, and the suggestion of a massive refrigerator. Being an FC house, the designer went to great lengths to invite visitors down the hallway to an elevator-like entrance to the private chambers, which are also absolutely worth checking out. Up next, we have the Thieves' Respite. Both a home and an insane interior design flex, this creator fashioned a cave hideaway that any legendary thief would be proud of. I'm a huge sucker for cave designs, especially ones that pull off an immersive cave structure. Rocks in the ceiling lead your eyes up to the sewer grate at the top with just the barest hint of daylight. I don't even want to think about how many fish ponds and stone lofts this took to achieve. There's tons of other great details here too. The doorways are built to look like the ends of massive kegs, giving a clue where the hideout might be connected to. Loose bricks, treasure maps, hanging cloth, lanterns, and scattered expensive looking items all tied together to tell a story. There's even a ladder to a small bed space. Super cozy. Heading overseas on Kujata, we have the award-winning Rue de Replicant. Going inside, you might think someone forgot to build a house, but a quick look downstairs will prove you dead wrong. There's so much detail packed down here, my poor graphics card could barely handle it. Greeting you from the doorway is a street-side cafe straight out of Italy. I love the lighting here and how it combines with the brightly colored walls. And the use of the Moogle's Paw lettering from the Gold Saucer minigame is especially cool. And let's not forget that if you turn around, there's just a... Is that a whole car? A whole car! Someone made a whole car out of furnishings! This kind of creativity blows me away. Very much worth checking out if you're in the neighborhood. Another designer home that caught my eye is Haru Shigure. This traditional Japanese style home has been expertly crafted with all the trimmings and trappings you might expect. With an entrance chamber to take off your shoes in, a bamboo bonsai display, and a zen garden complete with a false exterior roof, Already this place fills me with a sense of peace. Past the servant and into the living room we have a dining table, sliding closet, custom stone hot tub, all sprinkled with various objects that give clues about the owner. I love how this house makes great use of its windows and exterior space, alluding to a rainy day amongst greenery and cherry blossoms. Overall, a fantastic work. Switching things up, we have Honeywood Estate. This large FC house blew me away with its creativity, showcasing some pretty unique set pieces. Right from the entrance is a large fusion core-like structure that felt like stepping into a scene from Star Wars. Exploring a bit more, the extra rooms are pretty typical of what you might expect from an FC house. But head downstairs, and a mechanical rainbow hallway unfolds into an EDM dance floor. I hope the Lopera DJ has earplugs though. Bring your radiation suit for this next house as you enter the ill-fated Garlean power plant, which is, well, basically it's what if Garleans did a Cherry Noble. And as crazy as that sounds, the attention to detail here is incredible. There's a control room with hundreds of buttons and dials and displays, hallways with some dangerous looking electrical arc going on, and even a crew's barracks complete with a shower. And the star of the show is the reactor itself, of course. Glowing, oozing, and only slightly on fire, this is an incredible rendition of a nuclear power plant gone wrong. And what hits the nail on the head here, I think, are all the scattered rafters, boards, notes, and bits of grass dotting the whole experience. Even some of the walkways and stairs are falling apart, which is quite tricky to pull off. Speaking of laboratories, the laboratory ruins caught my attention for several reasons. You might remember the bookery from a previous video. The owner of that plot redesigned it into this. A crumbling cave for a hermit apothecary. Here is a believable cave space with custom made machineries doing who knows what, sprinkled with signs of life creeping in from every corner. But it's the roof that impresses me the most here. Throughout the cave are cracks and holes allowing natural light to seep in through cleverly hidden phasmoscapes. And these custom stairs, man, winding their way up to the second floor of this medium in a way I never would have thought possible. Very impressive. 
This next house might cause some of my viewers to recoil, but I want to stress that I strongly disagree with the creator's political viewpoints and I'm here solely to showcase an amazing work of housing. And don't worry, Hatsune Miku isn't receiving any royalties from this. This faithful recreation of the world of Harry Potter is like stepping right into Hogwarts itself. The main house has many set pieces from the series, most notably the lavish dining hall in the basement, complete with floating candles and even a sorting hat. But don't stop at the house itself. The private chambers also each contain a famous scene, like the nine and three quarters train station, the Mandragora greenhouse, Snape's potion mixing class, and even the wizard market street. There's a lot for any housing enthusiast to appreciate and enjoy here. Definitely worth traveling to Pandemonium for. While we're on the subject of movie set pieces, my Twitch stream viewers also directed me to the Porco Rosso Beach. This small house wastes none of its slots in creating that famous red plane and Porco's beachside getaway. It even includes nice details like the tent that all the sky pirates burst out of, the radio box he makes calls from, and the Italian flag attached to the rear of the aircraft. You gotta check out what this plane is made of though, like xylophones. Who'd have thought? This next large house, simply titled FC, seems like a bad time at first, but don't let the house being on fire stop you. This is actually a lavish, magical interior space, transporting you through multiple realities. Right off the bat is a reading area adjoined with what appears to be a magician's shop. As we head out the door, there's a covered rock hallway straight towards the private FC chambers lined with beautiful water fixtures and greenery and a proud display of ultimates. Turn to the right and you'll see the scene changes completely once more into a wonderful cafe and meeting area, ending with a lavender lounge and resting space. I can't stress enough how well this creator used lighting to their advantage here with each room uniquely colored, creating a sense of being transported into another world with each step. But the windows, man, this is one of the most beautiful window dioramas I've seen to date. They somehow managed to create an incredible sense of atmospheric depth here, to where it looks like the forest could just go on forever. In fact, all the windows here have insanely clever details, like this branch sticking out from the kitchen windowsill. There's a lot of inspiration to be drawn from this expertly crafted home and I hope every housing designer has a chance to get out there and see it up close. Finishing off our tour today is an FC house I was directed to in Riddle. It's a small Moogle house packed with several surprises. Greeting you upon entry is a beautiful greenery scene with a bridge extending over a makeshift river, diverting into two paths. The left path, of course, leads to the FC chambers, but the right path, that leads downstairs and completely flips the script into what can only be best described as a bona fide man cave. I mean, what else would you call it? We've got a car, we've got a motorcycle, a display of action figures, an entire drum set with an amplifier, a tool shelf, a garage door, and even a goddamn dartboard. Clearly, whoever made this likes to turn it up to 11. I just can't get over how much they were able to sculpt together here using only house furnishings. That's all I have for you today, but before I go, here's some amazing houses that need no introduction. I apologize for the delay on this video. As you know, I'm currently working on a door video collaboration project, which is well underway with almost 200 entries. And of course, Dawn Trail just recently launched, so happy Dawn Trail, everyone. 
I'm looking forward to viewing more houses with you all as the graphics and lighting systems continue to be updated. Don't forget that I'm checking out houses every Sunday and still taking housing submissions, so please share with everyone what you've made or found. I might even make it into one of these videos. Till next time, thanks to all my supporters, and I'm Denmo, I make videos, sometimes. Thanks for watching.